The message for today, when I first started this earlier in the week, I thought it was going to be something a little different. And then the more I kept praying about this, the Lord was just showing me something just even more intense with it than I was anticipating. And it was really good for me because uh, this is definitely... Please know that when I'm preaching, I'm also preaching to myself. These messages that I feel the Holy Spirit gives me, they're for me to look at too. And today's title of this message is The Masks That We Might Wear. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, uh, we just pray that, uh, number one, that everyone here will receive a blessing from you. That, Lord, the way that they came here today expecting a touch. And Father, I pray that you would touch them, whatever that may be. And Father, we're thankful for uh, just how you're always moving in our lives. And I pray that you'll bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, I know during this time of the year, it's very easy to think of masks. You know, Halloween's coming up, so that, that's an easy thing to do. And for Halloween night, it's just one night. One night that you have to uh, wear a mask or you might enjoy pretending, you know, to be someone else. But... What if it's not just one night? What if instead you're wearing an invisible mask to hide who you really are or how you're really feeling? And I would argue that it happens way more than we think. Um, I bet many people wear a lot of different masks that they don't really want to wear. Uh, that, that would be my guess. And as believers, the big question is, is where might that cross a line? And at some point, whether we want to or not, uh, I believe that a, wearing a mask is almost like a necessary thing. Sometimes I think that's okay. So, for example, I had learned about the passing of my cousin yesterday. I, I literally learned a half an hour before I'm at the wedding that I was officiating. And so I, I had to push that to the side, right? And so I had a whole different mask on. And I go to the wedding, and it was wonderful. I had a great time at that wedding. And there was a lot of joy, and it was so great to see the happiness in the couple. And I got home, and you know, then, then I was able to mourn differently. You know what I mean? And so I think there are definitely times where it is necessary for us to put on a different face, if that makes sense. But, and, and that could be in a lot of different ways. You know, for example, if you've had a bad day at work, you're gonna have maybe a time where you have to wear a mask. Especially if you have to go into a meeting with your boss. They don't want to see you all mopey, right? You know, that's not usually how it goes. Uh, or maybe you've had an ill child, or maybe you're having personal hardships in like your marriage or a relationship of any kind, like a friendship. Uh, there's times where you're going to put on something that looks different for the people that, around, that are around you. And you might be thinking, well, isn't that you being fake? No, I don't think it is. Because the Bible talks about that we're to have joy on a regular basis in our lives. And yeah, I might have really hard circumstances that I face at times, but I know the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so many times when I walk into those situations, I'm able to focus on, I am a child of God, I am redeemed, I am saved, and I can find great joy in just that and be able to put some of those things to the side and then deal with them at a different time. That's okay. Where I think it's not okay is where we're trying to wear a mask so that we don't address the sin that it is that we're facing in our lives. That's when the mask can become a big problem. In Proverbs chapter 5, sorry, Matthew 19, verse 5, um, I want you to notice what it says here. Again, Proverbs 19, uh, verse 5, it says, A false witness will not go unpunished. And whoever pours out lies will not go free. Ooh, I'm going to read that again. A false witness will not go unpunished. And whoever pours out lies will not go free. False witness. If we are dealing with really deep, dark sin, and we're, we're trying to you know, have a different mask on, not addressing what it is that we're dealing with, there's going to be repercussions. There's going to be things that you're going to end up facing, even though you may not like that. Um, notice what 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 through 9 says. Again, 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie 
and do not live out the truth. Notice that we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Notice that all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Man, does that matter? We got to be real. We got to be genuine. You know, uh, earlier I just shared, you know, that I had a hard time getting up this morning and that I'm not perfect. I'm really trying to be genuine with you because I don't want you to ever feel like I've got some sort of pretend mask on with you. You know what that's like. You know what I mean? You've met people where, it, like, they're really kind to you, maybe in front of you, and then they're not. And you know they're not because you hear about it, right? I mean, that hurts. That's a, a deep cut that you can take. And we don't want to wear a mask that uh, misrepresents Jesus. That is not good for us. And one of the masks that I think we'll try to wear to disguise ourselves if we're struggling with sin is a mask of holiness of everything's fine. There's nothing wrong that I have to deal with. Uh, and I think the best example of this is the Pharisees that we see in the Bible. These are the religious leaders that are supposed to be in charge of helping people in their pursuit of God. But yet we see that they definitely had a mask on basically. In Mark chapter seven, verses six through seven, notice what Jesus just flat out tells them. Because remember, he's God in the flesh. He sees them exactly as they are. He already knows what's going on with them. And notice what he says, verse six. Are we in seven? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, good. He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. And hypocrites, if you don't know, the Greek word literally comes from stage actor. That, that's literally where that is coming from. The person or the people that wrote the Greek translations of these. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. So notice that these individuals, the mask that they have on is one and holy, but in reality, they can't even recognize their need for a savior. They have no idea how lost they are, how, how, how blind they are to the truth because they're wearing a mask of, I'm so great and you should be exactly like me. Oh, no, 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 no. You follow anyone that starts doing that, you're in big trouble. It should be, I'm a sinner. Let's try and aim for being like Jesus. That should be the aim. It should never be, oh, look how holy I'm living my life like these Pharisees where it's, no, I have so many flaws just like you. Every day I struggle with stuff, but I know that I'm a redeemed son of God and I know that he's going to find a way to bring me to him, right? If we can have that be what we're projecting out to people, that is going to be what's reaching people because it's genuine. Take a look at Luke now, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Now, notice Jesus paints two people here. Boy, is this so interesting. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else. Look at that. Wow. Let's just start there again. <laughs> Is that the right way? Yeah. So to some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I got. But the tax collector stood at a distance. Aren't we like that in church? How many times do we just want to be as far back as possible? Not saying that you guys in the back are doing that. Okay, please know that. But I'm talking like from a distance when it comes to even just wanting to come through the doors. Okay, please know that. <laughs> so, but how many times, because we just, we feel like we're going to be a judged or people are going to look at us with, you know, some sort of response like the first person does, right? Where we're intimidated. 
He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Notice, that's all he had to do. In verse 14, from Jesus, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. They missed it. They're so busy with the mask of looking religious and making sure that everything in their life looked proper and prim, and because they weren't being genuine like the tax collector was, they missed it. I don't want to miss it. You know, I want to make sure that when I'm done with my life, that Jesus can say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. That, that's what I'm looking for. And if we wear a mask, you could be shipwrecking your faith without even realizing it. It's always good to have those gut check moments of am I really living my life for Jesus the way I'm supposed to be? You know, it's very easy to do the Pharisee type thing today. It really is. How many times have you heard of Sunday only Christians? where they come to church, they look great at church, and then when they're outside of the church walls, everything's completely different. And it's almost like they're ashamed to be a follower of Jesus in front of others. Now, are you gonna have those times where you mess up? Oh yeah, yeah, I've been there, so I understand how that feels. <laughs> so please know that. I don't want you to walk away, oh, I'm so bad at things, no, 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 no. I just want you to understand the reality of, I don't want you to get into a habit of wearing something that is not gonna reflect who's God just called you to be. If that's making sense, we all mess up. A great example of that is Peter. He denied Christ three times. And then in the last time, Christ looks right at him. I mean, imagine how tough that had to be in that moment, but yet he seeked forgiveness and that's exactly what he received. But notice though, if, if you, you should never be ashamed of who you are in Jesus. Don't put on a mask of being somebody else when you should be a child of God. You should stand out in everything you do, no matter what it is. So I hope that in my coaching, the kids see Jesus, the coaching staff sees Jesus. I hope with the children that I work with at the school, they somehow see Jesus in the way that I present that information. In the friendships that I have with people, I hope they somehow see Jesus in what I'm doing and not just me going along with everything. And there's gonna be times where it may be uncomfortable and that is okay, that's a good thing for you because it's showing that you are putting a, a line in the sand and you're taking a stand against things that you know are not good for you, right? Now, here's what's hard for me, jokes that are inappropriate because <laughs> sometimes they're really funny. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but at the same time, especially when it's you know against somebody I don't want to do that because then I feel like I'm putting that person down. And so there are times where I try really hard not to laugh. And has there been times I've laughed? Yes. <laughs> but I'm trying not to make that a habitual thing of just going with what everyone's doing. Does that make sense? Um, I think that's also important that uh, we're like that when, even with stuff we watch or stuff that we consume. So, you know, on social media, are you consuming stuff that you know you wouldn't consume if there was people here around you? Everything I try to consume, I really try to make sure it's something that I would do in front of anybody. I really try. Now, are there days where that does not happen? Yeah, and I definitely fall short of the mark. And those days are quite embarrassing. Is that making sense? So you're gonna have those moments, but again, don't just act like everything's hunky-dory when you know deep down it's not. Because you're gonna get tired of living that way. You know what I mean? It's exhausting to put on a mask that doesn't represent who you are day in and day out, and it just feels phony and fake, right? I mean, that, that's not the way you wanna live. You wanna live in a way where you can be like, yeah, that's me. Wherever I go, that's exactly who I am. That's who I try to be no matter what. And you're gonna find that you're gonna find way more peace that way. And then you don't have to deal with the side part here from Jesus. In Matthew 10, verse 32, this is such a big deal. Matthew 10, verse 32. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But notice verse 33. 
But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. I mean, if you're not a true believer, as people start to see you in different environments, it is going to become glaringly apparent that you're not. It just will. When you're in these different environments, it is gonna become very apparent to those people, they call themselves a Christian, but yet all I see from them are things contrary to the word of God. We don't wanna uh, misrepresent the faith. Uh, I'm a big uh, fan of teaching history. It's, it's what I do at South Newton now. And we've been looking at the Spanish conquistadors and how poorly they represented the Bible. It's where you had millions of Native Americans who rejected Jesus. Because they're like, why would I ever want to be like your God? You say you serve this God and all you've done is caused me pain and misery and now you have enslaved me. Why would I want him? We don't want people to look at that with us, right? And I'm telling you right now, once you've uh, tasted what it's like to be free from your sin, and then you try to go back and forth, you're gonna be miserable. You will, you will absolutely be miserable in those moments because you're trying so hard to wear one mask in a religious environment, another mask in, in a friend environment, and it just keeps going back and forth or even a work environment, and, and you're just miserable because you know there's something that it's not what it should be. Um, but God does. That's the thing. He sees you every bit of the way. He knows exactly what you're doing. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 9. I want you to look at what God is uh, showing here. This is so interesting. I want to make sure I've got the right part there. Yeah, that's it. The Israelites secretly did things against the Lord their God that were not right. From watchtower to fortified city, they built themselves high places in all their towns. They set up sacred stone and Asheria poles on every high hill and under every spreading tree. And that's a goddess uh, that's basically uh, from the idea of the tree of life, if you don't know what that is. Verse 11, at every high place they burned incense as the, as the nations whom the Lord had driven out before them had done. They did wicked things that aroused the Lord's anger, and they worshiped idols, though the Lord said, you shall not do this. So if there's things that you're reading in your Bible, and you know God has touched upon it with your heart, and yet you keep doing it so that you can blend into that environment, you can wear that mask of being there and being accepted, it's gonna come back on you because you're not gonna bear the proper fruit of being a disciple of Jesus if that happens. In Matthew chapter seven, verses 15 through 20, Christ says this, that we will know people by the fruit that they bear. Again, Matthew 7, verses 15 through 20. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good uh, tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, which is the idea of uh, darkness, everlasting. Verse 20, thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. People will know. You know, uh, children are, are so good at knowing the character of a person. They just know. If they're feeling loved, they just know. They, they, they will come up and embrace you. They'll gladly talk to you because they feel how genuine you are. Um, I had this at the wedding last night. One of the ring bearers looked bored out of his mind. And so I, I went up to him and I'm talking with him. And after that, it was on. He, he, he was just talking about Pokemon things left and right. And, 
And he just looked so happy because there was someone there who knew what he was into. <laughs> and so we were chatting and he was having a really good time. But it's because there must have been something that he felt that was genuine from me. And the people that you're with, they're going to know if you genuinely care about them. You ever had that before where people are talking, but it doesn't seem like they're really listening? It's almost like they're doing it politely. Now, if you do ever see me do this, full, full disclosure here, there are times I'm trying to track what you're saying because my hearing has not been the best lately. So if you're talking to me and all of a sudden I have this look of, <laughs> it's because I'm trying to track and infer exactly what you've said. So please know that. But uh, what you just know when people are just doing things out of being polite versus they genuinely care about you. I hope that each one of you, that when people encounter you, that they're like, man, that person really cares about me. That person is genuine with me. And think of the difference that it's going to have on all those relationships that you've got. And then when they start asking you, so tell me more about your life. There's your opportunity to share your faith. Here's why I care about you. Because Jesus cares about me and that love is coming through me, through the Holy Spirit. Now, there are two powerful examples in the Bible uh, where we actually see where if you're wearing the improper mask, it leads to destruction. And then if you're wearing a mask, but you're trying to do something for Jesus, what can happen? It's pretty amazing here. And both come from the same contextual story, which I thought was really interesting when I was looking at this. Okay, so uh, we're going to be in Joshua chapter 6. That's what we're going to uh, be starting. And for those of you who don't know, um, in Joshua chapter 6, this is where the walls of Jericho come down. And so if you don't know the full story, God tells them that they're going to surround this city. They're going to march around it uh, so many times. And then they're going to give a big shout and these huge walls come crashing down. And so when I was a kid, there was always these songs that, would, that we would sing Joshua built or stopped the walls of Jericho and it just keep going, you know, and so this was always an ingrained story with me. But there's two two people here that really stand out in this story. And one of them is a person named Rahab. Uh, she's a prostitute. And then there's another one. Um, and he's uh, Achan. And we're going to focus on what happens with him. So we're going to start in Joshua 6, 17, and I want you to notice what happens with both individuals. The city and all that is in it is to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go in to his treasury. So what they were supposed to do is when they conquer the city, they're supposed to make sure they keep nothing for themselves. It's to go to the Lord. And then the Lord will decide what happens with it. But the Israelites were unfaithful in the devoted things. And, oh, Matthew, I think this is Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. Let's make sure that's right. I didn't write down the exact, the exact chapter. Yes, all right, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes I do that with my notes. I really need to go over these twice before I, I do this because I'm typing things on my computer and then I just move on. Okay, but again, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. But the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things, Achan, son of uh, Carmi, son of uh, Zemir, the son of Zariah, the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against uh, Israel. Now, uh, Achan is trying to wear a mask of being a follower of, of uh, God. But really, there's other experiences and things that he wants more. That's what he really wants here. So he's got the mask on. Hey, I'm going to go out here. We're going to conquer, and I'm going to take all of this stuff and blend in like nothing's wrong. Everyone's not going to notice. I'm going to keep these few things for myself. And it's not going to work because, as we saw in Joshua 6.18, he clearly said, you would bring about your own destruction. 
by keeping things in your life that you know are not good for you, it's going to bring about destruction. Or, as it says at the end of verse 18 in chapter 6, bring trouble on yourself. And that's what ends up happening here, is that he ends up bringing trouble on himself in a way that he's not able to recover from. And again, God knows what you're doing. He sees everything that's happening. So if he sees it, what he wants you to do is he wants you to remove the mask. He wants you to be completely done with whatever those things might be holding you back. I would encourage you to look at Ezekiel chapter 8 when you guys are home or during this week. Because literally the entire chapter focuses just on God looking at what people are doing in private and then how it doesn't match who they say they are. The, the entire chapter looks at that, where he, he takes a prophet and says to him, go in and see the wicked and detestable things that they are doing here. And so he goes in and then he sees portrayed over the walls all kind of crawling things and unclean animals and idols of Israel. And in front of them, 70 elders of Israel, prominent people, prominent people who are supposed to stand for God, yet that's not who they're portraying, right? Privately, they're doing all this stuff that's not helping them to get close to him. Publicly, oh yes, I'm your leader, everything's looking just fine here, and then privately, they're bringing their own destruction before the Lord. Not good, not good. Now, uh, take a look here, um, what the Bible says here, uh, in Joshua 7.10, because Joshua and them, they have this big battle that they go and do. It does not go well because someone has sinned and so they're bringing trouble on themselves. Joshua chapter seven, verse 10. The Lord said to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned and they have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen, they have lied, and they have put them with their own possessions. Notice putting it with yourself. Verse 12, this is a big one. This is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you that is devoted to destruction. You, you got to get rid of it. There are things that you just know it's leading you to wearing a mask that you don't want to have. Living a life you don't want to have. You got to get rid of it. It's the only way you're going to be free from this is you have to remove it from your life. Matthew 6, 24 says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one or love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And you can insert in the place of money anything else. You cannot serve God and be consumed with alcoholism. You cannot serve God and be addicted to porn. You cannot serve God and uh, constantly be trying to live for yourself. It just doesn't work, right? And the only way that it's going to work is you have to actually rid it completely of yourself. And that's what we're gonna be talking about now with Rahab, and this is where we're closing, is with her story. So um, in Joshua chapter two, uh, the Lord tells him that he's gonna be taking uh, these different cities. And so he sends spies into the area. And then in Joshua 2, verse 2, the king of Jericho finds out that Rahab saw some of these spies. Now, notice what happens. The king of Jericho is told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and into our house because they have come to spy out the whole land. Now, she easily in that moment could have said, yeah. I found these guys, they're with me, and turned them to the king, and she might have received a lot of praise. But that would have just meant she's living the same life she's been living, a life of prostitution. Now let's think about what that's gotta be like for a person, a, a life of prostitution. All I can think of is a life of shame, frustration, 
abuse. That's not the life she wanted. She was very tired of more than likely wearing a mask, a mask of everything's fine, I'm making my living by selling myself when she's enduring all this other stuff. I'm sure she was sick of it. And she thought to herself, okay, it's been revealed to me that these people, these people are gonna come into the land and they're gonna take it. I'm gonna take my chance with these people. And what that really was, was God's redemption for her. God saw that this woman wanted a new start that she wanted to be shed of that mask that she was wearing and that she didn't want to no longer be this prostitute. And so what ends up happening when those walls come down, her and her whole family is saved. She ends up getting married to an Israelite man. She's now a child of God and then is the ancestor of Jesus because she took a chance. I am asking you to take a chance this morning. If you are sick and tired of these masks that you are wearing in these different environments, then there is no better day than today to shed the mask and to live properly in the light. Take the Rahab example and apply it. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you so much for how you want to rid us of things that are not going to help us. And Lord, I just really feel this morning, and again, I'm preaching to myself, everybody. There are some of you in here that you're tired of the masks that you're wearing, that you are sick of having to be someone else in a different environment. If that is you this morning, would you raise your hand? Can I see those hands going into the air? Praise God, praise God. They're all over the room, praise God. We're gonna pray that that is, is delivered for you. Now, if you're also here today and you have never accepted Jesus as your savior, that has to be the first step. If you want to be rid of this mask, if you want to have that new, that new fresh start, then, then you've got to embrace him like Rahab did. Before that, she served a whole different God and now she was ready to embrace the true God. If you're ready to embrace the true God this morning, would you raise your hand? No better day than the day. Oh, praise God, praise God. All right, so, I'm sorry, a little emotional because it's such a big deal, the idea that you get to have Jesus. So what I want you to do is just to uh, repeat after me as we're praying, okay? So here we go. Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please make me a new creation in you and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that prayer this morning, you are a brand new creation in Christ and all of heaven with millions of people is shouting out in glory. There is no better moment for you than what's happened right now today. And I'm now going to pray for others of you that have shared you wanted that mask to be removed from your situation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for courage, Father God, over every single person here. I pray, Father God, that for the strength that they're going to need, that, Father, your word would come to them, that they would stand firm for you and they would feel your presence, God, to know that you are with them in those moments where they no longer want to be so different in different environments, God. We, Father, may they be a light to all those individuals in a way where it doesn't come out as judgment, but instead different for you. We pray and believe that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so thankful for each of you for coming this morning. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know if there's donuts left, but please feel free to stay behind and visit. And again, we're very thankful that you are here with us today. Have a wonderful Sunday. And can we give a hand clap to God for the new salvations in the house? That is a big deal. Today is the new first day of your entire life with Christ. No better day, no better day. Again, thank you for coming.